Julie. And I'm Martin. And we live full time on our 58 foot narrowboat home, Rhapsody in Blue. We're taking you along as we continuously cruise the canals and rivers of the UK with some beautiful scenery, occasional wildlife, landmarks, aqueducts and tunnels. Come with us. Look at that, the sun's setting behind our boat. How lovely is that? Very nice. Look at that, beautiful colours. Lovely. It's a beautiful day here and a gorgeous mooring. I feel it walk, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> Walking nice down to the day, bottom of Foxton Locks, we're taking our rubbish for a walk, aren't we? Yeah, because it's been a couple more days, so more rubbish. <laughs> now, Adam, we had a Tesco delivery yesterday and all the packaging that comes with the shopping, yeah. honestly. Can't believe like everything's in boxes and then inside the box you've got another wrapper so yeah we just like to get rid of all the wrapping so yeah we're nearly at the bottom of the locks yeah. so there's the foxton locks in and this is the junction at the bottom of the lock turn left to go towards leicester and you turn right to go towards Market Harbour, which is where we will go eventually. At the moment, we're stopping here for a few days. Just to try and explain, we thought we'd put the drone up so you can see Foxton locks from above. We're actually moored at the top and the locks, as you can see, there's 10 of them and two staircases of five and there's a drop of 75 feet. They're actually the highest and longest staircase locks in Britain. Um, to the left of the screen, you can also see the incline plane or boat lift as it was originally. They built this to take wider boats so that they could take more cargo to try and compete with the railways at the time. It only took 12 minutes to descend or ascend the plane um, whereas the locks take 45 minutes you'll see that in next week's video because we will actually be coming down the locks believe it or not the locks were built over 200 years ago they've had no modifications and they're still being used today here it is from another angle you can see how the locks and the incline plane all went down to the junction at the bottom it's such a shame it's not in use today. It was only actually working for just over 10 years before it was mothballed due to roads getting better, railways getting better, etc. Such a shame.
you can just see through there the bottom of the inclined plane. In the winter ice was a problem but if it was less than six inches thick they could break through it with the ice boats. These were heavy timbered boats covered in metal sheets. They used to pull them with up to 12 horses while 15 men would rock the boat to make a big wave that would then lift the ice enough to crack it before the boat smashed through it. You can see how narrow and pointed they were. If these couldn't get through, then the canal just had to close. This one, the Thomas Holt, was named after a local engineer. Little did we know we were going to have our own problems with ice in the next coming days. First time we've actually come and this has been open. So this is the viewing point. So now we can see the inclined plane. And boats used to get pulled up and down there, down to the canal at the bottom. Oh, wouldn't it be lovely if they reinstated this? I know it's never going to happen, or certainly not in our lifetime, I doubt. Look at these gorgeous views. Isn't that amazing? Beautiful. And of course, the best oh. view <laughs> on the canal. <laughs> <laughs> going down the other side this time. <laughs> I'm going to go and see if the fox is going to serve in any food. So this is how... Oh, look at that! <laughs> oh, do it again! Oh, God. Do it again! That is <laughs> <laughs> getting a chunk of ice oh, they... from the canal. Hey! You have to show me the chunk before you do it. One more. Oh. If you can break it off. Show me the chunk. 
Ready? Hold on, hold on, hold on. That's it, right. Ready? Go. Oh, wow. Was it about half inch thick? Yeah. Well, something's happening because we can hear the ice breaking. So it sounds as though there may be a boat coming. And that ice is quite thick. So that's not good, unless somebody is throwing ice on the water. We can hear the ice crashing. You hear it? They may have opened the locks. Yeah, they could be letting water through, couldn't they? It's definitely moving and crashing. Every now and again, it will make it. Yeah, I know. Oh, I can hear it moving. The not as bold as the one we had at night, but have some food. Goodness me, they're trying to get through the ice. I think they've come to a stop. And he's left me another two to put in the tank. So I better get doing it. All right, Martin's off to get another couple. So when you're frozen in on the canal, you have to go and fetch water. And <laughs> I'm filling up. Martin, Martin is refilling these two at a time, bringing them back to me and I'm filling up the tank. They're all unexpectedly stuck here at the moment. So um, our friends, Caroline and Pete, came yesterday and run us down to uh, the nearest marina to get a couple of jerry cans full of diesel. I've just seen another couple doing the same. Um, and today we're ferrying water back and forth because even though the water is only about 100 yards up there, we can't get there at the moment. Not by boat anyway. I think that's number 13 and 14. <laughs> So that would be 140 litres that you've managed to fill up, mate. How many more do you want me to do? As many as you think you can. All right, mate. In a bit. <laughs> it's off to do another one. We forget, when we used to be in a house, we just took it for granted that you'd turn the tap on and there'd be water. But uh, when you're on a boat, you always have to make sure you can source your water. Thankfully, we're not far from a water point and Martin can go up and fill them up, bring them up, and I can put them into the boat. Um, normally, you'd, that's why we never pass a water point. We always stop and fill up. Even if we've not long filled up, we put as much as we can and keep the tank full. That way, if you do get caught out, you've got to... Uh, You've always got water. 
but uh, yeah, when you're frozen in like this, there's nothing we can do. I mean, I've been feeding the birds this morning. They've been walking on the ice to come and get the food. <laughs> well, by the time we finished, we would have done, we would have put 200 litres in. So that will keep us going for a couple of days, or a few days. Yeah, each of these bags is 10 litres, so yeah. He's got another two more runs and we will have done 200 litres. So, not bad, eh? Not long now. How you doing? Back of my arms are stretching. Oh. <laughs> Your arms are getting longer? Yes. Oh dear. Oops. Thank you. Shall I just do two and that's it? Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't. I've lost count now. This will be 22. 22? Really? Yeah. You said I was going to do one odd one, but I won't. I'll do two and that'll be 22 then I'm done. Okay, cool. Yeah? Yeah. So 220 litres, nice. So remember last winter we were on the Van Gogh'lin and when the canal froze, yes, the Van Gogh'lin froze. The first time in 12 years apparently. Um, we joined hoses together as we were opposite the Ellesmere services and we just joined hoses together and filled everybody's tanks up. So yeah, I'll put a link to that video somewhere either on the screen or in the description below. So you can, uh, you can go and watch that one if you like. It's all part of winter boating. That's it, that's 200 litres. So, just another 20 to come when he gets here. Brilliant. The ice got steadily thicker over the next few days. You can see by these pictures, in some places, it was a good three to four inches thick. See how icy it is. There's the icicles on the inside of the lock. Look at that. This is the CRT office and the little shop where you can get a coffee and exchange books. But just look here, look at this view. Wow. Just look at this. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Beautiful. There's obviously a little brook down here, but it's all frozen. <laughs> and this is the sign they've got telling you all about George Durham, the lock keeper. Scenery here is just stunning. Thank you. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? All the locks are frozen. Look at this. It's so frosty underfoot. Look at it. Look at the size of the ice. Look how thick it is. Goodness. And then you've got one of the pounds over there. You can just see some water running into it. But yeah. Oh, hello. What's Martin doing? What are you doing? I think it was. Crikey. <laughs> this is the pound that you pass in between the two sets of five locks. 
it's all icy this end and look at all those icicles the other side where the water's run off goodness I do think nature is beautiful all the icicles and ice crystals it is beautiful it might be cold but it's gorgeous This lot's doing a pee. Look at that. We'll have to remember that when we come down. <laughs> Just thought we'd go for a walk, didn't we, mate? Yes, we need bread. And brush the cobwebs off. Cobwebs? <laughs> There's only so long you can sit. <coughs> Excuse me. You all right? Yeah, I'm still getting over a bit of a cold, aren't I? Yeah. There's only yeah. so so long we can sit in the boat though isn't it yes uh, you're wanting to go out for a walk I just wanna, and... yeah just get a, what you say, a bit of fresh air isn't it yeah and the weather's so the nice walk. it's freezing but it's beautiful absolutely glorious On today the side, there's something else they have so. weather coming in didn't they again yes we've got storms coming in this weekend 58 mile an hour winds it says on our app so yeah brace yourself <laughs> Some are swimming and some are standing on the ice. <laughs> Ducks meeting place. Look, that's the whole of the Foxton Junction iced over. Look at that. You need to go under. Look at this lovely turnover bridge. Look at that. Look at that. Martin. Looks like the farmer's got a fire going, look at that. Thankfully the wind's going the other way. <laughs> cool, that's roaring, isn't it? seem to be walking back to the boat when the sun's going down behind the boat and that, that looked well, lovely and a better picture oh here we go oh you're silhouetted Come on. <laughs> this mountain trying to break the ice it is so thick Trying to break it around the edge of the boat. So we've got high winds coming later, and if this is still frozen, it's going to keep slamming our boat into the ice, which isn't good. So we've just come back up to the car park and received our Tesco shopping delivery, and uh, we didn't have too much today, just a bag and the small trolley. So just things like milk, squash, bread, <laughs> the sort of essentials and obviously a few goodies at the same time. Yeah. So we're back to the boat now, aren't we? Yes, hopefully. <laughs> Winter coat on. Yeah. Yeah, it's not quite as cold today as it was yesterday and the day before, but it's 
very windy. So hopefully the wind's not catching the um, speaker. But um, no, we've got some high winds coming in, haven't we, later? A bit of high winds and uh, I think we're gonna just check the boat with a few fenders down, just make sure it don't crash up on the side. A bit noisy yeah. last night. Yeah. Buffeted by the wind. Straight into the ice. Kept slamming us against the ice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the thing is, we don't know about the locks, whether they're draining a little bit. They are frozen quite a bit. Yeah. But last night was a quite a lot of movement, wasn't there? there Felt was. like there was someone on the boat. It did a couple of times. Kept checking the camera. Ooh. But uh, yeah. Right anyway, we'll see you back at the boat. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so this is the uh, young lad walking with the horse here at Foxton. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to read. What's it say? Towing a boat all day is very tiring for our horse. My dad doesn't let me sit on him as it would tire him even more. Please do not climb on this sculpture. Here we are, home. We'll get the shopping and we'll take the shopping in the hatch. Our friends Sandy and Andy came to see us and we went out for a meal at the Black Horse pub in Foxton. We also met up with our friends Liz and Paul and obviously Ernie and it was lovely. Thanks guys. We had a visit from our youngest son Craig and his boyfriend Fraser. <laughs> and of course little Tiggy. Do you know who she is? Yeah. Are you filming us? Yeah. Why not? Yeah, because I can. Goodness me, boat's decided to go. Look at the big old lumps, look. Jeez, you don't realise just how thick it is until you see a boat trying to move. More concerned, there's a GRP behind us. I do understand this is a higher boat, they, they need to move. We do feel for them. I don't know how they're gonna get through this ice, it's so thick. Goodness, he can't even break it with the pole. Alright, they're giving it another go. It looks like they're having to reverse and then do a run up. It's going to go bang in a minute. The ice around our boat. feel for higher boaters because they feel they have to move because you know they've paid for this holiday and they need to get places but the ice is about two or three inches thick where they are at the moment I'm not even getting through with the barge pole no, they're reversing again I'm going to take another run up Come again. Down three or four. Jesus. They're banging with the pole and it's just not going anywhere. That 
side's not going to have any blacking left. <laughs> I think they might be trying to turn round. Goodness. So it looks like it's defrosted because you can see all the water on the top. That is literally just the surface has defrosted but there's a good two two inches or so underneath as this boat is finding out we did feel for these higher boaters they'd already sat at the top of the lots for a couple of days because of the ice but they needed to turn the boat around so they could take it back but you'll see here the ice stops them dead Jeez. keep going or keep trying but we'll see they're reversing now so whether they're going to try and ram the ice I don't know let's see see what they do again it's another higher boat I do feel we really feel for them but you know there's a GRP behind us we can't stress that enough the size of the shards of ice that are getting thrown up could uh, go straight through their hull. Uh, I think he's going to try and turn round. Thankfully they decided to moor up and wait until the ice had gone. So Martin has been fitting his Christmas present. And you're gonna get out of the way? No. Come on, <laughs> show everyone what it is. It's Come not on. A good thing or a bad thing really, isn't it? <laughs> well, it might be a bad thing for me. Come on. <laughs> Look, we have two. He's got two hooters now. But Martin two horns. But you have promised me, haven't you, that you're not going to make me jump with these because they're too, uh, it'll be too loud. Yes? I'll only be using the horn for necessities, like i.e. tunnels, turnings, blind bridges. Where Judy can't say, I will use the horn, but she will give you a warning. And you're not going to make me jump? No? You're not going to make me jump, are you? Promise? No. Nah. 